right let's get on with our first demo now on the show today we have got oodles of wonderful mdf bundles just move those oh and some wonderful wonderful selection of stencils so we've got traditional stencils and we've got stencil masks and we're going to use play a bit with both of them so i've got the gel lines here and i've got the gel trees and these are big a4 stencils as you can see now they don't come with these little bits they come with them um, some little pips here so you, you can twist them and they'll pop out or if you just get a little pair of snips you can pop them out like that so if i just pop one out see i can twist it and it'll come out or i can use my snips it depends whatever you want to do so now i've got that space i can stencil in so i could do all the different colors but then i've got my mask that i can put back over the top and color around the outside so i can still keep that shape so there's lots of different ways to use them so we're going to be using those and we're going to be using the mdf bunting now you get five pieces all in all as long as well as your um, birdhouse so I've already just done a base coat on each using um, colours from the paint sets that are out there, the primary sets. So let's get started. Okay, I've got all my bits separated. Um, and what I like to do is I like to try and work um, on two pieces at once. The acrylic paints do dry quickly, which means I can do one background, let it dry for a couple of minutes, do another background, and I can keep interchanging that way. Now, the plastic packaging that you get your stencils in, yes, is binnable, but do keep, because it's great to put your paints on while you're working, and then you can get rid of it, or let it dry and turn it over, and you've got a perfect work surface that you don't need to clean up later on. Right, the first one that I'm going to have a look at, and use stencil-wise, is this beautiful gel line. So we get all the different pieces, as you can see there. So we can create the backgrounds, we can then put that back in and go over or you can use them separately if you want to and layer them all up and, and create a background that way it, you've got so many choices with these type of stencils and so many little bits and pieces that you can use as well you could use spray adhesive on them you know the temporary adhesive if you want to so you can hold them in place but don't forget your stencils you can emboss with them in your die cutting machines so you could layer this out on an A4 piece of card um, and put it through your machine and you've got you've got either embossed or debossed shape. So there's lots to do. Right, so let's make a start. So I thought we'd have a go on, let's have a think. I think we'll use this one on the blue, why not? Let's move that one out of the way. Now I've popped out all my pieces, which means I can actually start layering them across my stencil straight away how I'd like them to go and I want it to cover as much as I can but I'm not sure if I want the big one down there so let's have a look how we can do this and as you can see it it covers quite a substantial bit yeah let's do something like that as I said you could use temporary adhesive if that's what you want to do so okay and I'm quite happy with that. So I'm just going to pour out some paints. Um, and I'm using a mixture from the basic sets that are out there. So I'm going to use some of the white, the reds, the blues, and the green from the brights. And I'm also going to use some of the fluids as well. Because the um, these paints here, the acrylic paints here, are opaque and dry um, matte they're brilliant because they'll go on top of this because these paints are semi translucent they have all the properties of an acrylic because they're slightly um, fluid which means they're, they're not quite as thick as the acrylic they can lay on top which creates some really interesting effects so let me have a think what's happened let's have a bit of green I'm just going to layer out a few colors and I might not use them in the end but we'll see
Okay, right, I will do that corner bit in a minute, but I'm going to let these bits dry. So if I take that away for the moment, you can see that we've created the basics that we've done. Now I can go back over that once that layer's dried and I can add another layer and make it more and more and more and more intense. And I might just do that, I don't know yet. So let's just move that to one side over there. And I'm going to bring this one in. Now this one, I thought we'd look at the A4 gel trees as it's called. So you get your different masks, so I can take that out. So I could do a base colour I could put this back on and then I could go over with another colour which creates a, you know, your, your depth and layers. If I moved it slightly, you can do staggered stepping. There's so much you can do when you have a, a stencil that has a mask. But I thought it'd be nice we'd just do some leaves. So I'm going to do some traditional colour leaves but then I thought we'd do some nice bright leaves as well. As you can see by just using that I've created my quick background so I'm now going to swap over and start working on my first one and let this one just dry a little bit more so I'm just going to move that out of the way okay let's start working on this I'm just going to check it's dry it is now the acrylic paints as you can see there as they've dried have dried slightly darker which is brilliant now I can go back onto here and I can line up different things that I want to do so now I can grab some of these if I want to and I can put them over the top. So as you can see, because the acrylics are opaque, they sit on top of each other so they don't lose their intensity from each other. So I'm going to carry on building my patterns and we'll see what it looks like, what we're going to do next with it. I'm not worried if things have merged in because I've got a plan for that but I just thought it was fun just to have a play and, and not worry about you know preciseness so I'm going to put that to dry and I'm going to work on the leaves next My leaves done this time so I've got these ready I'm going to give them a couple more minutes to dry and then I'm going to give you some ideas of what we can do to extend them you know where you might not be happy with certain different bits and pieces and just to actually have a little bit more fun with them okay what other things can we do so I could just get the black micron pen and just doodle around the outside there I'm going to do the same for this one now if you want your lines to be precise you could put the stencil back in place um, which means you would then get your lines perfectly on the edge I'm just going for a little bit of an abstract look I think that would be nice just to do something a little bit different Right about there, let's go over this one. Uh, 
and I'm going to do something similar on this one here. I'm going to try the black first, but then I might go to a white, we'll see. See, I've done all my doodles. I'm now going to add a little highlight and I'm going to use the metallic gold from the fluid acrylics. All right, so I've just made a start and I would carry on doodling and I would do exactly the same with the leaves. So I'm going to go off and do that and I'll come back and share with you what I've actually done. Right, I've doodled away merrily and I finished up my bunting. So I thought I'd give you a quick look at what I've done. So this one was when we used this stencil and mask, which was the leaves. So I've used all of those to create the leaves. And I've added some of the gold and I've just doodled around the outside. For this one, I've used those wonderful lines with the hexagons. So that was that stencil there. I'll put them and I've created that and again I've doodled around and I've added some of the gold. Now this one I've um, gone ahead and done but I've used the um, the flowers. So let's grab that stencil in, Oh, as you can see. So I've grabbed and used the flowers there and again I've doodled around the outside, a little bit of faux stitching, similar colours as before. That's the leaves that you've already seen. And the final one that I did was I used the beautiful circles as well. And you get the same sort of principle and you get lots of different things within there. So they're my bunting pieces. So I'm just going to sort them out and put the stencils to one side. She says. Okay. So in the pack we get five different pieces of bunting. So I've done mine, I'm just moving my stencils out of the way. So I've made mine very bright and bold, as you can see there. So that is lovely bright and bold and I haven't actually, um, as yet, put the string through them to, to put them all together. So you could do them in lots of bright ways. Now I wanted to do it this way. Sometimes we get a little bit upset with ourselves when, like for this instance here, it's bled underneath the stencil. And we don't have to do that. I mean, doodle around them. Make it look like a deliberate, you know, mistake. That's what the look you were going for. And just have fun with the creative process. Now, I appreciate that doing something bold and bright isn't everybody's cup of tea. But one of the extra, extra benefits with this bunting is it's double-sided. So if I turn them over, on the opposite side, I've gone a little bit more vintage. And I've actually used the same stencils that I've done for this side. And all the difference is I've added a little bit of rice paper, some of the crackle paste that we've got on the shows here. And I've just changed the colours to keep it a little bit more vintage. So you could do that. You could actually have one side being bold and bright and the other side being more vintage. And then you can go ahead and start adding your different embellishments if you wanted to. So you could start adding your flowers, a little bit of beading, what else have I got? You could add your ribbons. So if you like the vintage look, you can actually do your bunting like that. If you like the bold and bright, you can still add your ribbons and you could go a little bit brighter with your ribbons and coordinate. So I'm grabbing lots of bits up and add along those lines. You could add your buttons to the centre of the flower. So there is so much you can actually do with this bunting. 
Now I've taken some photographs of the bunting hanging in my pear tree in my garden so you can see how it looks outside. I've obviously weatherproofed it all using the Mod Podge um, and I've added a few little bits of decoration here and there. And it gets an idea of how it can look. So I can have a bold and bright day or I can have a more vintage look day. I went vintage with the birdhouse and I matched it to my bunting. So I've done exactly all the same to it. So when it's all hanging up together, I've got a look that way. But it doesn't stop you using your birdhouse and going bold and bright. It would work just as well. It depends on the look you actually want to do. I can't wait to see what you do with your bunting and how you use your wonderful stencils that are in the show. Thanks for watching and in my next demonstration I'm going to be doing some MDF and we're going to be using the stencils but we're going to be doing it a little bit different. Look forward to seeing you soon.